Remember that first time you put on a VR headset, that feeling of stepping into another world? I'm Fistful of Shrimp, and today I'm going to be helping you take that next step from experiencing virtual worlds to creating them yourself. Virtual reality is transforming everything we know from how we play games to how we learn and work. While most people are just beginning to experience VR, you actually have the opportunity to shape its future. And the best part is you don't need years of experience of programming or advanced mathematics to get started. But before you start, it wouldn't hurt to know these five essential skills that I wish I knew before I started my VR journey. The first one we're gonna talk about is VR design principles. Now, the reason we're starting with this is because it's something you already intuitively understand as a VR user. What makes a great VR experience? Think about your favorite VR application. What makes it feel natural and comfortable? Why are you so satisfied when you use it? These aren't just happy little accidents. They are a result of careful design principles that we can learn and apply. First. Let's talk about one of the most important ones, which is comfort. VR comfort isn't just about high frame rates and good tracking, although you will want those unless you want your users to get VR sickness, which they will. It's about understanding human perception and designing around it. Watch what happens when we compare these two movement systems. See how the first example causes discomfort while the second one feels natural? This is because it respects how our brains process our virtual movement. Understanding these principles is your first step towards creating an experience that people can enjoy for hours. But comfort is just the beginning. Let's look at interaction design. Notice how these interactions feel natural, grabbing, pointing, manipulating objects. I mean, even when you are using the force to whip a gun into your hands, we can't do that in the real world, but it does feel natural. It feels like we can just reach out and do that. So when this is done right, users shouldn't have to think about how they're interacting with their virtual world. They should just do it just as naturally as they would in reality or even with their unnatural abilities in virtual reality. Next on the list is game engine fundamentals. Now, I primarily use Unity because I find that its workflow really clicks with how I think about VR development. But here's something important. Your perfect game engine might be different. I've experimented, I've had fun, and I've tried out all the other engines just to see if I like them, and I just simply prefer Unity. There's nothing wrong with that. All of these engines are just a tool to get a job done, so it's important for you to go out and figure out what you are trying to build and see if this is the right tool for you. And just like with any tool, you'll find that Unity, Unreal, and Godot all have their strengths and limitations. So, let me show you around Unity really quick and build up a scene. See how you can visually build a virtual world? Each element can be customized right here in the inspector panel. Whether you choose Unity, Unreal, Godot, or any other engine, you are just going to want to eventually pick one and really get to understand how it works. How do you place things into a scene? How does the engine actually process and render the images onto a screen, or in this case, a headset? How does lighting work? How does that affect performance? These are all a lot of questions and you'll learn them in time and you don't have to master your engine before you get started. So game engines, I encourage you to go out, experiment, try out different engines. Each one has a unique strength for VR development. Unity works for me, but you might find Unreal's visual scripting to be more intuitive or perhaps Godot's open source naturally appeals to you, the key is to finding the tool that works for your creative process. Now let's talk about VR development toolkits. This is where development gets pretty exciting. So VR toolkits aren't scary. It's just like a game engine, except more specific to VR development. If the Unity game engine is your average toolbox with a hammer and a screwdriver and a drill, think of a VR toolkit like your specialized toolset that does exactly what you need. I'm talking about you, my drive nylon strip oil filter wrench that helped me rip off my oil filter. You saved my life. And just like my oil wrench saved my life, your VR development toolkit is going to to save yours because each toolkit is going to provide pre-built solutions for very common VR interactions, letting you focus on what makes a VR application unique and fun instead of having to build out all the basic tool sets of how to grab something. Now, I myself primarily use the XR Interaction Toolkit and 
It's not because it's the best, it's because I find it is the most approachable when teaching people. It does have a lot of features built out in it, like grabbing, touching, UI interactions, grabbing things from afar, teleporting, continuous movement, you name it, it covers a lot of bases, but it's still being built out and it's still changing. There are plenty of other VR toolkits that you can look at if you want to pay for some that are fully built out and have things like stabbing, automatic hand grabbing. You can go to things like the Unity Asset Store and look at things like Hurricane VR or auto hand or the VR interaction framework. All of these function very well, but you're going to, just like the game engine, want to pick one eventually and learn how to master it and learn what it has to offer and what other feature sets you might have to build off of it. Game engines acts as a foundation so you don't have to build a game engine from the ground up and learn how to render things to a screen. Then VR development toolkits are just the same thing, just way more special. Specialize. You don't have to develop a grabbing mechanic. You don't have to develop a way to interact with the UI. These are going to be built out for you. It's going to jumpstart your ability to produce games. Number four comes in strong with programming basics. Now, this was going to happen eventually. Sure, you don't need a million hours in programming, but you will eventually need to know some basics of programming. Now, for myself, again, since I use the Unity game engine, I primarily work in C Sharp. And programming doesn't have to be scary. Whatever Whatever language you end up with, understanding the core components of it and how it works is going to be vital for you building on top of your frameworks. Some key concepts in programming you want to probably get familiar with are things like variables and types so you can store information like hand positions or controller inputs, functions that run specific VR events, references to other components so your scripts can talk to each other. I mean, the list is a little extensive, but don't feel overwhelmed. I started with zero programming experience just like anyone else. And the key is to starting small. Maybe you want to make an object change color when touched or play a sound when it's grabbed. Each little success builds your confidence and understanding. Start with basic grab functionality, then add some haptic feedback or maybe some visual effects. This iterative approach is how you'll develop your VR experiences in the first place. And on top of that, then you'll be learning programming. The last thing you're going to want to dabble in is 3D mathematics and spatial thinking. This is probably one of the coolest aspects of working in VR development working in 3D space, or at least that's what I tell myself so I don't lose my mind when I suck at math, because I do suck at math. But that shouldn't scare you away, because math, just like any other skill, just needs to be developed. If you've ever picked up a VR controller and moved it around with something, you're already kind of doing 3D math without realizing it. Think about it. Like, you're reaching out, grabbing something, and your brain's automatically calculating the distances and angles that you need to approach the controller with. That's exactly what we're doing in development, just with a tad bit of precision. See how this cube moves along the colored arrows? Red is X, green is Y, blue is Z. That's our coordinate system. It's like a GPS for the virtual object. When you're programming VR interactions, you're just telling the objects where to go using the same directions. Now, watch what happens when I grab this virtual ball and throw it. Behind the scenes, we're tracking three things. The position of our hand, which is a vector three, so X, Y, Z coordinates. The direction you're throwing, another vector three, and then the speed of my throw would be used to multiply that direction. The beauty of all this is once you understand these basics, you can create almost any interaction you can imagine. You don't need to understand every mathematical concept perfectly. Start with the basics and grab more advanced math when you need it. Remember, game engines handle a lot of the complex math for us. Focus on understanding the concepts that directly impact your VR interactions, positions, directions, and basic rotations, and the rest will come naturally as you build more projects. And if you're excited about creating more VR experiences and want to dive deeper, I've created an extended version of this guide for my Patreon supporters. My Patreon also gives you access to projects files, development tools, and other fun doodads like exclusive tutorials that you can use along your VR journey. Whether you join us or not on Patreon, make sure to subscribe to the channel. I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.